Hi there, I'm Lisa Carmen. I am a mom of two 20-somethings and a fur baby mom. I'm a friend, I am a colleague, I am a sister, I am a career intuitive and a businesswoman. To make a very long story short, I spent 20 years in corporate America and some wonderful, caring women leaders pushed me in ways I didn't know I needed to be pushed and helped me discover my work. This is my favorite thing. I started my business, Resonating Resumes, 12 years ago. You can find my website at resonatingresumes.net. I started 12 years ago and haven't looked back since. I will do this work until I retire. I am truly living my destiny. I'm known as the resume guru, and my specialty is writing executive and professional level resumes and LinkedIn profiles. This session is called Resume Rescue for Experienced Women. I know about experienced women because I am one. And because of what I do in my work all the time, I get to deal with these amazing, brilliant, and incredibly successful women leaders all the time. As experienced women, we all have superpowers. Um, that the superpowers we bring only comes from living life to the fullest, from making mistakes, from learning, from having successes and failures and persevering. And when you're writing a resume, that is a gift. We are going to be delving deep into who you are and what you bring. And that means looking into those achievements from way back when and your more recent achievements. And yes, you all do have achievements. <laughs> what it really comes down to is our superpower is our girl power. Have you heard, as you may have heard about in other career camp sessions, um, we do it all. We take it all on and we get it all done. So let's talk about, at this point, how I set up this workshop. I want to make sure you're prepared for what's coming. You received an email with a fillable PDF for the workbook or this session worksheets. So this session is called Resume Rescue. So make sure you have those worksheets available. The email um, instructed you to either have the worksheets on your laptop or tablet that you can complete or printed that you can then complete by hand as we're going through the workshop. Either one works. So this is the perfect time to make sure you're all set up and ready to move forward and start working. Now, in this 35 to 40 minutes, we certainly can't build your entire resume. That's impossible. And your resume should be an ongoing work in progress well beyond today's workshop. What I'm sharing with you today is my tried and true program that will result in an extremely effective job search resume. My intention for you today is that I share all of the information, the structure, and the inspiration you need to write a resume that gets you the interview. That's what this is all about. So let's take a quick look at our agenda. We've already discussed the worksheet. I will be providing examples of pieces of the worksheet in the slides as well to keep us all on track. Uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is you. It's all about you. Uh, we'll talk about your strengths, your personality, things like that in, in identifying what you're best at and what you bring to the table. We'll also talk about your impact. That is how you show an employer what you bring, really who you are and how you operate and what they can expect from you. I will spend a few moments and only a few because we have a very full docket for the next 40 minutes talking about ATS systems, applicant tracking systems, um, and keywords on job descriptions, only because it's vital information you need to know about. And then in the very end, we're just gonna pull it all together. So get your worksheets out for Resume Rescue, and let's go to the first section, which is all about you. We'll start with the banner, then we'll go to your strengths, and then talk about your brief description, your profile description. So go ahead in your worksheets, 
and turn to where it says banner section. What you see here is my recommendation for how you set up your resume in terms of the banner. The banner includes your name, your contact information, and your job title information. I'll get back to that in a moment. So for just a few moments, quickly fill in your name and your contact information in the worksheet online on your laptop or by hand. As soon as you're done with that, we'll talk about the job title information. So this line, the one line underneath your contact information should always be either the exact title of a job you're applying to or a list of job titles that you're interested in pursuing. So we'll talk more about that as well. As you can see in your worksheets, there is an example of job titles out there. I just brainstormed a list that, of job titles that I know are there. They're just for you to peruse and look at, and maybe some of them speak to you and are what you intend to be doing next, assuming you're qualified and ready for that. What I really want to draw your attention to is the examples of multiple roles of interest. So this is when you don't have a job title in front of you. You don't have that job description that you're applying to. This is where you're going to be um, emailing your resume to a friend or a colleague or a hiring authority, but you're not talking about a specific job title. So in particular, uh, I noted a marketing executive's resume. So the line underneath their contact information, their title line, probably says something like this. They're interested, this person, this woman is interested in applying to a chief marketing officer role. She would also, depending on the company, be interested in a senior VP role of marketing, or perhaps even a director of sales and marketing. All of those job titles are indicative of what she's pursuing next. So when she doesn't have the exact job description, that's what should be in the title line underneath her contact info. I provided four, four other examples for you. Each line is a string of job titles that, that anyone might consider. And feel free to plagiarize my materials. <laughs> a quick, um, just to wrap this part up, on the territory manager line, the very last one, this would be for a salesperson, a sales executive, or a sales leader. So a salesperson might very likely apply to a regional VP role or a territory manager or account manager job or even a sales team lead role. So that's how the title line works when you don't have an exact job description to apply to. So now is the perfect time to pause the recording and as your worksheet suggests, note a few job titles of interest and create your own job title line that is indicative of those job titles, those positions you're going to be applying to. And welcome back. We're now at the profile section. Uh, there's a couple of pieces to the profile section and I like to start with identifying your strengths. Any number of things could be a strength. So I want you to try to identify nine strengths. If you only get to three, that's better than nothing. Just write down the strengths that come to mind as quickly as you can. That's the whole point of this, to get you started. So a strength could be a personality trait. We all know people whose personality can make or break um, a work environment. We've all experienced that. So if you have an, a really unique personality trait, you might want to list that. For instance, for me, one of my personality traits is contagious enthusiasm. And yes, sometimes I listed that on my resume. It's never a keyword in a job description, but I like people to know that I'm highly energetic and, and I help, I motivate and inspire people. So that was important to me. I also might have listed as a strength um, inspirational leader. Uh, you might list collaboration or teamwork, uh, data analysis, financial modeling. There's any number of strengths, technical strengths, traits, special knowledge or skills. Um, just very quickly, pause the recording and come up with your nine strengths. Welcome back once again. 
Now we're at the profile section that I call the profile paragraph. Now, do we have to use these headings, profile section and profile paragraph and, and all of that? No, you don't use the headings. Don't waste real estate on your resume with, with those headings. The profile paragraph is going to show up right underneath your title line. And uh, you'll see this later in a template I will provide you. So the profile paragraph should be a very brief statement of who you are and what you really bring. Shoot for between 300 and 500 characters with spaces. And I've noted the character count next to these four examples in your worksheet of profile paragraphs. So the first one has 298 characters. The next one has 451. So your goal is to be between 300 and 500 characters. And as you review these par profile paragraphs, you'll see they're very brief, they're to the point. So in your mind, I want you to really consider what do you want a potential hiring authority to know about you right off the bat? And that's what you write about. Now take a few moments to pause the recording, review the examples, and then of course, start writing your own. When you're writing your own profile paragraph, the point is brevity. Be very concise and brief. Don't try to make it perfect right now. That's not what today is about. Today is about jotting down your ideas and impressions, understanding the structure that they will be inserted into once you have things written just the way you want them. So your goal is to capture the best about you and your experience and say it quickly. And remember, work in progress always for your resume. So go ahead and note those profile paragraphs as quickly as you can. Just one is all you need. Now that we've gone through the profile section, which also includes the banner section, um, we're all the way down to the experience section of your resume. I recommend that you call it professional experience. So what you see on your worksheet that I'm also displaying on the screen is my suggested format for how you set up your experience section in your resume. So you start with the company name, city and state, and the timeline. Use year to year, unless you want to use months, you can do that too. Year to year just tends to give a very clean line of timeline that is really easy for a recruiter or an HR person or a hiring manager to review very, very quickly. So it's nice to just have years. But if you must include months, that's okay too. Now, this is your resume. So if you want to include something about the company, a lot of people tend to in include paragraphs about the company they worked for um, or are working at. If you're gonna include company information, just add a line between the company and your job title and insert one line of information about that company. That's all you need. Then you list your job title, and then you will write a one to three line responsibility statement. So we're gonna be talking achievement statements and responsibility statements. They're two very different things. Think of it this way. Anyone can make a list of the responsibilities they're supposed to be doing in their job, but not everyone can actually show their impact through achievements with the results attached. So we'll get to that shortly. But what we're talking about now is just a very brief statement of what you're responsible for. And as I have been, I provided examples for you of different responsibility statements. Again, these are not achievement statements. The first one is very brief, directed organizational realignment and prepared the company for future opportunity capture. That's all there was to this person's job. Huge huge scope, huge impact, but you don't have to say that much to, to get the point across. Less is more on a resume. So take a few moments now to, to review the examples of responsibility statements, and then, of course, you'll move on to write your own. I'd like you to focus on writing your most recent responsibility statement for your last role or the role you're currently in. Next, we're coming to my favorite part, the my impact. What has been your impact? 
And, and we're going to show this in, in, one, in a couple of different ways in a three-step formula. Super simple. It just takes a while to get used to writing like this. So we're going to talk about your achievements, first identify them, and then we'll talk about writing those achievements into achievement statements with results. So here is first identifying your achievements. That's the thing that when I talk to a client and it's a high powered woman who's been in corporate for many years and I say, so tell me about um, your successes. Over and over again, I hear, well, I don't really think I have any. Yes, you do. You do. And then I say, well, you've been working and getting paid for it. So I'm assuming they're not paying you for doing nothing. So let's talk through what you think you've done that matters and what your impact has been. So right now, my whole point is to get you to at least identify some of your achievements. Now, consider it from this filter. I want you to write down the achievements that you want to talk about in an interview. That is key on your resume. So take a few moments to pause the recording and note as many achievements that you can think of, starting with most recent, going backwards in time. And if you're having trouble and after this workshop, you're, you wanna think of more achievements, look at your past performance appraisals. Uh, look at meeting notes, consider project team uh, work and emails that you've received. So pause and write down your achievements. All right, now that you have some achievements identified, the next step is to actually create an achievement statement from each of those achievements. So this is how you're going to do it. I'll just go straight to the formula for you. Start with an action verb. So what you're seeing here under number one, the achievement itself was called technology upgrade. And then with number one, I say, well, let's start with an action verb. Use past tense always in your resume and describe your role and what you did. So we added the word led. We could add the word directed or managed. It still means the same thing. You were leading this effort, led technology upgrade. The next step in the formula is to actually explain the situation. And if there's anything unique or unusual or difficult about it, also clarify that. But you need to be quick about it, be brief. For instance, led a resistant operations team in CRM technology implementation. So that gives a lot more context to what you were faced with in this CRM implementation. And you're explaining it a little bit further beyond technology upgrade. And the third and last step is end each statement with results. Now you can say resulting in blah de blah, or you can say whatever you'd like to end it. But the key is end it with results so that as a reader goes through your resume, it sets, us, sets up almost a rhythm and they know all they have to do is glance at the end of each of your bullets, your achievement statements, and they're gonna see your impact. With results, you can be quantitative. That involves, of course, numbers, percentages. You could do a guesstimate percentage if you don't have exact numbers. As long as you feel like you're being honest about it, that's all that matters. Uh, quotas, goals, but results can also be qualitative. What was better? What was different as a result of your efforts? Uh, was, did teamwork improve? Did the culture change in some way because of who you are? Uh, was customer service better? So look at qualitative results as well. Both matter. And I've given you examples of several achievement statements. Um, these are just achievement statements I've written over the years. I have a million of them. Um, and I wanted to give you a good flavor for how they flow. Just starting with an action verb, describing the situation, and then ending with results. So take a few moments to review those examples and then go to the worksheet part that allows you to start crafting those achievement statements. So take a pause in the recording and come back when you're ready. All right, at this point, we've already gone through the banner section and the profile section and the experience section of your resume. Those are your main most important sections. Then comes 
other sections, other headings and categories. For instance, education, you might list education and training, you might list certifications, you can group them together if you want, totally up to you, that's your choice. Also, you can list professional affiliations or professional organizations that you're a member of, or perhaps you're on a board. Uh, you can also list publications that you've written. I've had clients that have two pages of publications and presentations uh, that are an addendum to the resume. Also community service, um, honors and awards, that type of thing. So consider which new headings and categories you need to add to your resume and take a moment to complete those sections. Welcome back once again. Uh, this is where I'd really like to walk you through what I call the keyword conundrum. ATS systems or applicant tracking systems tend to be a huge mystery for people. And they're really not that mysterious. You just don't know what happens to your resume after you apply online. Once, once it's into the ATS, the applicant tracking system. So here is my process for tailoring your resume to an ATS system. First, you've got the job description in front of you on the computer and you're gonna apply to it. You're excited. You can't wait to put your name in, in, in the hat for this role. It's exactly what you've been looking for. So open a Word document, copy and paste that job description text into the Word document. Then using the Word highlighting tool, quickly highlight all of the keywords that you think are significant to success in that job. And here's the secret. There is no magic formula for figuring out what the keywords are. It's your best guess. So don't spend a lot of time agonizing over it. Just look at that content, those keywords, those, that job description, and quickly highlight the words you think are most important. Then take your highlighted job description and compare it to your resume, okay? Then the words that you've missed that you're pretty sure are keywords, insert into your resume. And here is my tip of the year. Only tailor your resume to a job description in the content above professional experience. Don't make it a hassle to always change the entire resume just to tailor to a job. That's why you have key strengths listed. That's why you have a profile paragraph to make it easy for you to add keywords to either of those pieces and tailor your resume to that job description. You just do your best. Now, the caveat here is you, of course, don't wanna add a keyword that you cannot speak to in an interview. So make sure you're being honest about it and you can speak to those keywords and then you're good to go and you will get through the applicant tracking system screening. That's my tip of the year. All right, and now what's left is for you to get it done. If you're a DIYer, go for it. I believe in you. I know you can build a resume from the structure I provided you and make it fabulous. And I'm also going to be providing a link to my LinkedIn profile and my website that will give you the resume template I just walked you through. So get this, all you have to do is copy the content from that PDF document that you've been working in and paste it into the resume template and you're good to go. Keep building it, keep improving it, keep adding your achievements. I know you've got this. And for anyone who's not a DIYer and would like assistance from me, um, I am offering a 25% discount on any resume service through the month of August of this year. So till the end of the month, just let me know that you were a participant either uh, through the recording or at the career camp and you will get your 25% discount. And finally, you are amazing. I know this because I work with you every day. I know you can do this. Uh, the hard part for all of us is owning your value. So that's what I want you to really work on. Own your value, truly integrate your sense of value into your soul and go for it. You can do this. I wish you all unbridled success in your life and careers. 
and I thank you for your attention.